Yeah, well, this is obviously, you know, you, this draft has been talked about quite a bit as far as the talent level that's out there. I mean, I think there's there's one guy everyone talks about and, and everyone I'm sure wanted him. But, I mean, is, is it hard to uh, feel like, uh, you know, too disappointed, you know, when you, you get the third pick in a draft like this? We're going to get a great player at three. There's no question about it in my mind. And, you know, everybody wants to win the lottery. That's then everything is in your control. And obviously everybody's talked about a special player at the uh, the top of the uh, rankings, but we're confident that we're going to get a big difference maker at three. Did you guys, uh, were, were you watching the same broadcast everybody else was? I'm assuming you were on that. Did you, I mean, it seemed like they, they, they went early on the Jackets picking third, you know, and that whole thing with ESPN or whatever. So did, did you guys kind of have a feeling like, uh-oh, at that point? Well, I think it was pretty evident what was going to happen. So, yeah. Spo spoil the uh, spoil the moment, I guess. Yeah, that's what I got for now. Next school year, port slide. Go ahead, forty. Yeah, thanks for doing this, Yarmo. Uh, is is it is is it simple to say, or is is it too simple to say that the results of this draft next year mean that this is probably going to be a help for your roster? a year from now rather than or sorry two years from now rather than next season do you feel any chance of three you get a player who's nhl ready for next year and, and can help you down the middle well we'll have to see what happens with one and two i think it, it the uh, the one number one pick is going to be pretty clear and anticipated but then you never know what's going to happen after that we'll have to wait and see and and i've said this many times that this is not a sprint it's a marathon and it's it's about who has the best career um, I've been in these positions many times before. Um, I've given you the example of, of when I worked with St. Louis and we picked Alex Petrangelo at four and it took us two years to wait for him to, to become an NHL player. And, and we faced a lot of criticism, but, um, you know, he turned out okay. Yeah. And do you find yourself thinking, you can look at it two ways. If, if you don't beat Pittsburgh in the penultimate game, you're in Anaheim's number two spot. If you win more games, you're in Chicago's spot, and maybe you win the whole thing. Does, does a result like tonight cause you to look back at some of the, the tough wins and the tough losses that you had throughout the season and, and think of how different it could be? I, I think if you go back in time, then you're going to have another lottery as well. So I, I, don't, uh, I don't look at it that way. Thanks, Trevor. Next, we go to Mark Shy. Go ahead, Mark. Thanks, Todd. Yarmo, just now that you know where you're picking, does did the lottery have any impact on the coaching search? And did that do you have any sort of a timeline and when you might have a decision there? I don't think it's going to uh, affect that. And we're going through our scouting meetings right now to put the uh, the list in order for the draft. Obviously, there's some more information to be gathered after. Uh, as well because there's some players in the world championships and then there's the combine and the interviews and all that process so we may have to uh, uh, take another look at it and maybe tweak it a little bit before the draft but we'll be ready by the time um, we get to Nashville and, and the uh, coaching search is going on it has been going on for a while and uh, once we get through these amateur meetings we'll uh, we'll get to that even even uh, with more of a focus so um, we should expect a decision on that sooner rather than later, but we want to make sure that we do our due diligence very carefully. And now that you know where you're picking as well, does it impact your off-season plans as well? Like, do you maybe have a clear focus on what you need to address knowing that you're picking third as opposed to somewhere else? I don't think it's going to change that. Obviously, um, you know, if, if we were picking number one, you could be pretty confident that the player would be on our team next year. But as I said, it's... Um, You've you've seen in the past where where you, teams wait for for a player for a few years and and um, and then they make a huge impact when they get on the team and and turn the franchise around and it was worth the wait for a couple of years two three years whatever it takes and um, you know I'm confident that the player we get at three is going to have a huge impact on this franchise. Next we we'll go to Greg Mashinsky. Go ahead, Rush. Thank you. Hey, Yarmo. Um, I just wanted to follow up on the coach question uh, real quick. 
can you, in, in sort of a general sense, uh, explain what you, what your top priorities are in finding someone? Is it someone with previous NHL experience? Uh, you know, what's the sort of broad strokes of the kind of coach you're looking for? Well, I think it would take a long time to get get into all the details of that. That's obviously a very important position, and and um, you know, we we talk about a culture a lot. We talk about the standard that the coach has to set every day. Um, experience is 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 always uh, something that's an advantage. It's it's never going to work against you. Um, but at the same time, every great coach in this league had to get a start at some point. So it's not the only uh, criteria that we have. Um, you know, passion for the game, attention to details, the standard that, that they set every day, whether it's on the ice or off the ice, uh, those are the most important things that we're looking for. Um, you know, we, we've felt that um, you know, we've had a, a real good culture here for many years where the standard was high, the way we work, the pride we take in, in our work was very high and we have let it slip a little bit in the last couple of years here and and now it's time to get back to it. Next we'll back to Aaron Portsline. Go ahead, Porty. Yeah, Yarmo, does this does this change the tone of the meetings you've had you um, when, when you're you've had meetings for amateur meetings, can you just explain how this changes how you look at the board and do you still think there's is there any chance that you can uh, get the player you were maybe dreaming of getting, if not at the one spot in the two? Uh, it's not going to change anything the way we do our order. We're going we're gonna to go one, two, three, just like we would have wherever we would have finished um, in the lottery. But, uh, you know, I can't emphasize the fact enough that, that we're going to get a real good player. You know, you feel disappointed that you didn't have the chance to control the draft with you with your first overall pick and don't have to worry about anybody else but we're gonna get a hell of a player at three yeah thank you and next we'll back to brian hedger go ahead Hedge. yeah hey armo um i'm wondering sit, sitting three like this um it's probably early, obviously but do you anticipate uh teams trying to move up and and would you be more you know, apt to take those kind of phone calls sitting three than two, maybe. Uh, it would. It would have to. I, I. If if we were at two or three, it wouldn't change much. I. I it's going to take a lot before we would move back from those positions. Okay, and then, you know, I was just wondering going into this draft or lottery draft lottery, the Blue Jackets as a franchise obviously have not had a whole lot of luck or. or any luck, uh, I think 0 for 9 or 0 for 10 when having a chance to win the first pick. So going into it, do you look at it like we're due, <laughs> like one of those things, or do you go into it looking like, you know, I'm just not going to get my hopes up and wherever we pick, we pick? I always try to remain optimistic, and but I look at the odds, and you know that the odds are not great when you have 13.5% of chance of winning the lottery so um, it's just the reality of it and it's out of our control and and you hope for the best and keep your fingers crossed but um, you know then, then the results are here now and and we're gonna get a real good player at three. Thanks for going to Whitney Harding. Go ahead Whitney. Hey Yarmo thanks for the time tonight. Um, obviously the fans were really excited at the prospect of the number one pick as we all were hoping um, but how can you keep them excited with this number three spot? I mean, there's so much talent in this draft. JD's talked about it. So what would you say to the fans about the prospects you can get at three? Well, just look at the history of the league and, and the players that have been drafted at three or four, or even, um, you know, even in the not so distant past. Uh, you know, Kale McCarr was drafted at number four. He was a, he's a uh, Conn Smythe winner on the uh, Stanley Cup team last year and, and Norris Trophy winner. And, and um, you know, it's. Uh, it, it, I can't emphasize it enough. I guess I've repeated myself quite a few times now. But we're going to get a difference maker. We're going to get a, a player that's going to change the, the direction of the franchise. Uh, everybody is obviously hoping for number one, and and but um, you know, we're, we're going to get a big piece that's going to help us get to the next level. And and whether it takes a little bit of time or or there's an immediate impact. Um, it doesn't really matter. We, we, uh, we just need to uh, make sure that the player we select is going to have a great career and, and we're confident that the player available at three will do so. Time for 
a few more. We'll go back to uh, Greg Mashinsky. Go ahead, Wish. I apologize. I, I meant to uh, mute myself or lower my hand. I will go to Mark Scheid. Go ahead, Mark. Thanks, Todd. Um, Yarmo, you've always been on the record when we've talked to you about the draft about best player available. And I know that the team has a positional need at center. So is this the kind of season where best player available is still the motto or would the, some, would the need in this case possibly be higher than the best player available if they're not a center? Uh, I think that when you look at the uh, public rankings there's not too many defensemen very high in the draft this year and we just drafted two very good defensemen uh, last year and um, and um, you know I think that our future is pretty bright on that side center ice been talked about enough um, that that we need need to uh, strengthen that position um, I think there'll be a, a great center iceman available at three um, you know, those guys are a lot. A lot of those guys are ranked in the uh, in the top of the rankings with the uh, with what you see publicly, and and we'll see who gets taken at one. I think we have a pretty good idea of that, and then we'll see who gets taken at number two, and and we'll take uh, take our pick at three, and and um, it'll be a, it'll be a great player. My last one for you is just about the combine. When you're at three and you have a decision to make. How important is the combine? How much value are you going to put into it this year, knowing how important of a decision that it is for your team? Well, 95% of the decision is, is what they do on the ice. I, I think that um, you know these players, they're so young before they get drafted and, and, and even after for the next couple of years in some cases, um, we, we can give them that direction with our player development, what they need to do to, to become pros and on the NHL level. Um, they're incredible athletes uh, already on what they do on the ice um, in the games. So it's our responsibility to, to um, get them in the right direction, understanding what the uh, physical demands of the NHL are. But uh, obviously you look at the, uh, the combine and the testing and and, and all those things to gather more information and, and it's not just uh, to rank the players but also to know that what needs to be done after, after you make your selection and how you, how you get your hands on right away directing them or, or getting them to go into the right direction right away. Thanks, Sharma. Thanks, everybody.